Yeah, we're going to get started now. So first off, can you tell me about yourself, what you do, how you're connected to Hamilton families? Uh, well, the first thing I'll start off with is that I recently got engaged this weekend. So that's the first thing I'm telling everyone this week. Congratulations. Um, you know, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I've told everyone just to block me now because it's going to be engagement stuff for the next like couple of months. So just get ready. Um, what I tell myself is like, obviously, my name is Christine Keener. I'm the director of government and community affairs for Verizon um, based here in San Francisco, but really serve the entire kind of great greater Bay Area. Um, the first thing I normally tell people is I am born and raised in Oakland. And I say that because I think when you tell people that you're born and raised in Oakland, it tells you a lot about who they are. It tells you that um, you come from a place that knows how to have fun, but knows how to get things done. You come from a place where there are a diversity of people, ideas, foods that make you who you are, but also challenge who you are, mm. right? It's the one thing to be a good friend, but to challenge your friend to be a better version of themselves, right? We're always trying to strive to be something better. And, and I think the Bay Area does that for us is to like say like, you're good, but you can be better. Um, and so for me, that has always been my upbringing. And so I, I'm so rooted in where I come from because it has allowed me to do so many amazing things, but it's also allowed me to give back to those who have given so much to me. Mm. Um, and so I take a lot of that in my role with Verizon because I realize that like so many people have poured into me that is my turn to pour into others. Um, you know, speaking of black moms and black women, there's a whole saying that the struggle continues and that, you know, every one of us has, you know, this amount of time to change the world while they're here. And so I think, you know, my struggles are different than my mom's struggles that are different than my grandma's struggles. So like, how do you make sure that we are doing our part to make sure that we are increasing and kind of moving the movement forward a little bit? Mm, I love that. I, I love that you speak about like moving the movement forward and almost the duty that we all have to build upon what was before us and avoid the things that didn't serve us in our communities. I wanted to ask you like, why specifically Hamilton families? Like how that connection come along? It's pretty amazing. Cause I, I've worked for the city or I've worked, I worked in the city for probably about seven, eight, nine, ten years now in, in different roles. So when I first got out of college, you know, I worked on some campaigns, I was familiar with Hamilton families. I worked for the mayor's office of Hope, which um, was about homeless policy. And then I worked for the new, newly created Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing, and then with Rec and Park and now on Verizon. And in every one of those roles, I work with Hamilton families. So it's pretty, it's been pretty fascinating to see how my perspective of Hamilton families has changed with the different roles that I've had, mm -hmm. but also to see that Hamilton family continues to lead the way when it comes to how we serve our most vulnerable. I think we talk a lot about you know, making sure everyone has a chance to succeed in life. And I think Hamilton families often leads the way in having, in having those discussions, but also being a part of the table and bringing others to those tables to be able to have these discussions to say, hey, how do we do this better? Mm -hmm. How do we reach more people? How, we, how do we become more intentional in our engagement and our efforts? I was listening to Ms. Ivory's um, interview earlier and just seeing the passion and happiness in, in her voice and saying like, I just want these families to trust me. I just want, you know, I'm here for them. I want to tell them that mom role when oftentimes a lot of folks don't have that figure to say, hey, let me help you. Yeah. Um, I think that speaks volumes about the work that they're doing. And in every role that I've had, I've seen that in a different level. And this has been amazing to be able to now be in this role to be able to give back and support the work that they're doing um, has just been such an amazing gift um, for me, but also just to get to know them and their staff has just been something that I, I truly value um, in my roles. Wonderful. And can you tell me a little bit more about like, I, I, I as I've spoken to all the people I've gotten to kind of interview so far, each one I'm very curious to hear, especially from the Black women, based on the experiences of, of careers before interacting with Hamilton family, which is quite diverse, a lot of female led departments, like, and the beauty of all of that, but it comes on the heels of what might have been before. So how has your experience been working with Hamilton families in its diversity and its in its uh, capacity, in the many capacities that you've worked with them over the years? <laughs> What's that been like as a Black woman to be in that space? Um, I think there's a saying that goes, my lifestyle is my greatest witness. And I think that what Hamilton families does is that they, they lead by actions, right? It's one thing to oppress, it's another thing to impact. 
Mm. Right. I think it's important that when we talk about representation, that you have that at every level, right? It's one thing to make sure that your board is diverse, your leadership is diverse, your frontline staff are diverse, your back end staff are diverse, because I think that is how you get more perspectives to the table. That is how you have that authentic engagement that we look for, right? For so many people, their first encounter is going to be with people like Miss Ivory, right? So how do I, as someone in my most vulnerable state, go someone who does not know me, does not know my story, and have the ability to tell my truth and be open enough to know that they will accept me as I am with no kind of prejudgment, mm. um, but willing to fight fiercely for me as if I were their own. And there's something sometimes about seeing someone who looks like you to say, okay, like we can do this. I see the pathway forward, right? Because I think oftentimes we don't know how to achieve what we can't see. We don't know it doesn't exist. Yeah. And so I think be able to say like, like here, let me help you. Trust me does a lot. And I think you saw that was Miss Ivory. I keep going back to that because that is what Hamilton Families is about, right? It is about that connection and, and putting people in positions to say, you know, give me your hand, let's do this together. Mm. That is the difference between, you know, making it sometimes and not making it sometimes. Uh-huh. And I think that's in the work that, that, that they do is be able to say, we put the person at the core of everything that we do. Oh, absolutely. And, and I can't wait for all of the interviews and even listening to you speak. I cannot wait for them all to be on the platforms at one time, because as people listen to them kind of back to back, I, I'm not talking, I'm not talking to everyone at the same time. Like these are totally different interviews. I've asked certain questions in certain ways, just specific to the conversation I'm having in front of me. And yet there are these reoccurring themes from each person. And it's so interesting to me that the thing that keeps popping out at me, just like slapping me in the face is that it really is participant first. Like I think I've perceived in my other limited capacities with some organizations in life that it can sometimes seem that in an effort to help our ideals come first, that the, the helper, the allies ideals come first. And I just feel like with Hamilton families, based on what I've seen in the past two days and experience in my time knowing about them, that it is always participant first, you know, it's always, what do you need? And let me hear you. And I got you, I will do what I can to make that true. And so I wanted to know, uh, in your capacities, again, because over the time, it sounds like you've worked with them in a few different (laughs) How have you seen Hamilton families be a force for positive change uh, for Black people, like for, for the people they serve? Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, to, to your point, that kind of that reoccurring theme, is because I think we know that like those who feel it, know it, and those who know it will lead us. And so I think when we are able to support um, the subject matter experts, the ones closest to that reality, mm-hmm. then you get authentic results and you get trust and you get innovation. I think what we see is that like creativity is our superpower. Mm-hmm. And we're able to say, how do we look at a situation and be able to create a unique experience, we create unique outcomes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think what Hamilton Families does is that they are they are not shy about being bold, mm-hmm. right? They are willing to say, we are gonna be intentional efforts. And they call it out. I mean, to the point that we talk about, like we are going to support black women, black families, black people. Mm-hmm. That's hard to say for a lot of people. Right? They're worried about what is that, that otherness going to say, right? But when you call it out, you have to be intentional about your work and where you're going, right? We can't create shared obje- shared realities unless we have shared objectives, mm. right? So we have to be extremely intentional in that, right? How we got here was intentional and how we get out of this is intentional. And you have to be bold in saying that this is what we're doing. This is how you can support us, right? How do we make not only our allies, but but make them be our accomplices, right? You have to be in this fight with us. Mm-hmm. And so by calling it out, we say who's willing to, to be honest, who's willing to rock with us in this effort to move things forward, right? Like I say, don't impress, impact, Very right? We're gonna make some, and I think there's a difference in talking about it. You gotta be about that work. And I think by saying that, I think Hamilton Femmes is saying, this is our focus. This is how we know, this is how we solve these issues, right? You talked about how you guys moved here, you know, there were a lot more people who experienced homelessness who looked like us than who actually live in the city sometimes. And so I think talking about like, how do we create spaces where black people can feel like we are rooting for them, 
right? That let's say I can make it here yeah. or they see themselves in these roles and these leadership roles and being successful, right? How do we create expectations of success? Mm. I think families does a good job of, you know, as people say, turning that vision board into like a photo album, right? And so I'm saying, okay, how do we make sure that we're not just talking about things, but we're doing things? And, and it, it's so apparent to me. I mean, when I first came to my husband about it and he kind of set up a, um, a meeting with Curiel and beca oh, because he's the CEO and my brain went, obviously, yes, I want to interview him. And his first thing to say was like, yeah, we, we have these black women who also would be probably more worthwhile. And I was like, but you're, my first thought was, but you're the CEO. And to see him go, but there are better voices. There are more important voices. There are people who I've been here four months. They've been here 10 years. You know, it, it really is putting kind of his money where his mouth is as a leader. And and, and I, I've found that throughout my conversations with the other people I've communicated with from Hamilton families. And it's interesting. I'm, I'm curious, as an Oakland native, um how Wait, say, say that say that again so that open part there we go oakland native. <laughs> <laughs> as an oakland native how have you seen have you seen the results of what a hamilton families in organization does uh on on the home on your home on your on the place you've been for years definitely i think you know i always say that um you know working for Verizon, one of our guiding principles is that we create the networks that move the world forward. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is, you know, working with organizations like Hamilton Families that, you know, talks about we can't move forward unless we're all moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. So what is real recovery if we're not bringing people along with us? And how do we create access and options? Um, and I was listening to one of the speakers before talking about how, you know, Hamilton will always be there, right? Like even when you're you've moved up the housing ladder and you have stable housing or you have your income or you have that job, like they will always be a resource for your children, um, for your family members. And I think that's the piece that, that we need, right? We need to say that like, no matter where you are in this process, that we are here, that once you graduate, that's not what we would determine that success. Right. Success is that long-term sustainable kind of growth that we see to say, okay, how do we continue to build our tribe, mm. right? continue to be a network for each other so that when something comes up that we're kind of reaching back up and say hey like bring me along the process how do we continue to bring each other along the process i think hamilton families is doing that because they realize that like this requires a all hands on deck approach right like you have to be courageous enough to have those conversations to say we have to be so much to so many mm. but part of the privilege, right? I think even in my role, you know, as a black woman in corporate, like I am grounded in my privilege and platform to be able to make funding decisions, resource allocation decisions, who I support. And so I think part of, you know, my role is to like, how do I support those who are doing the work? Yeah. And how do I continue to, like to Kira's point, how do I continue to elevate those who are doing the work? Right, and I think Hamilton Families is all about elevating those to say, how do we continue to leverage off each other, build options, build pathways, build success? Because to the point, like we all can't move forward unless we're all moving forward. Yeah, and and in hearing you say that, I I'm taken back to my earlier conversations and also this thought that just plagues my life because I think it motivates me in that as a black person, I try to stay keenly aware of the legacy that I'm building upon or that that was laid before I even stepped foot on this earth and how I how it's my duty to take it and run to the moon. And so I want to know what you think ha Hamilton family's legacy will be on the black community absolutely but in general on, on the the area that they serve in 10 and 20 and 30 years. What do you hope? What do you believe based on the work they're doing their legacy will be? I really, and I think obviously she's in the forefront of a lot of our minds. As Amanda Gorman, I was watching one of her, you know, her interviews after she became, you know, the phenom that she deserves to be in all rights. And she talks about like, you know, I am able to dance in my ancestors' footsteps. And I say that because I think what Hamilton is doing is realizing that like we are working in the now, but we are also working in the future. So how do we create foundations and systems? And how do we also change the systems? And how do we change the mechanisms and how do we change 
all the inequities that have brought us here so that we are able to have a bigger, larger discussion about more other things, right? How do we get up that hierarchy of needs and how do we build foundations for others to dance on, mm -hmm. right? How do we, how are we able to address these issues in a way that we're not having these discussions 15, 20 years down the road, yeah. right? I think that's a goal, right? Their mission is to, you know, solve family homelessness in the Bay Area. That is a big, big task. Right. And it's one of the things that we don't want to, you know, have a discussion down the road. Like, how do we actually address that issue? Right. Because when we can do that, we've made our impact and we've allowed people to be their best, their, their best selves, to create spaces where they feel like we are rooting for them, where they have access, they have options. Right. And like I said, we are moving the world forward together. I think that's what Hamilton Films is doing, right? They're being bold, they're being creative, they're building trust, they're changing the system. Absolutely, and, and, and that building the uh, changing the system part is the thing that uh, has been coming up for me as well throughout these conversations because I believe that I think Hamilton Families as an organization really does believe that they are going to solve family homelessness in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I have this dream now based on everything I'm learning that when that happens, their slogan will then come solving family homelessness you know, nationwide. Like, I just feel like the groundwork is laid for this organization just to grow and grow and grow and shoot to the moon and never stop the work because the work isn't done until it's done kind of thing. Uh, and I wanted to know from your perspective, like as, as someone who isn't directly under the Hamilton family's umbrella, but absolutely a force of nature within um, their their goals, what would you say to other people who are trying to jump on, you know, and be a support, be an ally, um, give to or work for Hamilton families? What would you say to them? That's a great question. What I would say to them would be, I think as I, I mentioned before, don't be shy about being bold, right? And I think, say that because I think we all need to realize, and I, was, I would also add to that, like what I said earlier is that, you know, our lifestyles are our greatest witness. And so I think, you know, we have the ability to meet the moments in a real way. And I think to your point earlier, a lot has happened over the course of the year to where we've seen, you know, heightened, heightened inequities that have been exposed due to COVID. I think we've seen kind of a growing gap of you know, our income gap, or our education gap, right? There are a group of people and families who will not have had real access to vital information or to educators. Mm -hmm. And so how are you thinking about, how are you grounding your approach and platform and how are you meeting the moment, right? How are we supporting those who are doing the work, right? And I think also realizing that like you are also are grounded in your approach and platform and how do you use that like as you're doing now, Chris, to, really elevate and empower those who are doing the work. I mean, I think that is the important thing to say, let me step out of my, like myself, my kind of myself and say, what can I do to meet the moment? Yeah. And I think that's what the conversations are about is how do we recognize that we all play a role in this, that we're all hands, it's all hands on deck. Mm. I think that's what you have to realize is that like, in order to achieve these, these lofty goals, that we need everyone to be all in on this. And I think that's the key part is, is that like, we have to do our part, right? We, the struggle continues. And so we have this time period to make sure that we are doing our job to move the movement forward and to address all issues. Yeah. And that it requires you to jump in and to not be shy about your boldness. Yeah, I and, and this is a, my final question for you. Um, I, as I've been, like I said, getting to know Hamilton families the most intimately I think I have since, since uh, learning about them, I am understanding more and more that it seems to be true that they believe as an organization, don't just work hard, work smart. And, it, and, it, and to me, that's most apparent in the fact that they're not just trying to find people a house or, or shelter, they're trying to find them a home. They're trying to set them up for longevity. They're trying to make sure that the, the children from those families have have the knowledge that you know they can come back this is a secure place for you they're laying these foundations of trust and knowledge that will help the adults continue to be their best selves which will in turn help the children in those families be their best selves and i want to know from you what what are the things that make hamilton families different from the other the other organizations with similar goals what what for you is is the thing that they uh, kind of 
is unique to Hamilton families? I think it's a lot of things, right? I think that's what makes Hamilton families amazing because there's a lot of things. I think about their leadership, right? Over the course of my time there, they've had, you know, Jeff Kaczynski as a leader, they've had Tamika Moss as a leader, they've had Kirio as a leader. And I think it's that leadership to where they are able to be in all the different rooms, right? They work with corporations, they work with city departments, they work with the community members, they work with small businesses, right? Like that all hands all deck approach starts at the leadership position, but I think also it goes in every level of staffing at Hamilton, right? To where like we are a reflection of our community, right? Like we, you know, we look like the people we serve. So the certain people that we serve will see that we are also a part of you, right? We are part of your village. Mm. You know, all the time, similar to in my role, that like you're gonna see me at the gas station, you're gonna see me at the grocery store, you're gonna see me walking down the street, right? Like we are in the same spaces, and so we have to be a unit, right? Like we are a village. And I think that's what makes, you know, Hamilton family special is that like they really embrace that village kind of mentality that like we are all in this together. And as you mentioned, like here's part was like, yes, I am leader, but like there are so many important people in our organization who are doing the work. And how do I elevate and empower their voices to be able to, to be able to have that moment to tell their stories, to tell their truth? Because like, talk about like they are the ones who know what has happened I think that's what makes you know for me Hampton family stands out is that like you know their their lifestyles are their greatest witnesses I mean they they represent they have representation they are intentional um you know we think about equity mm-hmm. we think about how resource allocation right they're part of the discussion about why there are more black people in homelessness is that we have to have a discussion about why are there more black people in homelessness yep. and have to call that out right like we said like how we got here was intentional and how we get out of this is intentional and while that is a comfortable discussion to have some time to, to face those mechanisms those systems that have created this this problem this disparity this intentional disparity mm. we be bold in how we approach that and how we how we address that and to bring folks along who are willing to be bold with us in addressing these issues. And I think when we do those things is when you see real impacts and we create real solutions. Um, so, so I think that is what makes Hamilton Family so special is that they come to us and say, this is what we're doing. This is how we achieve it. This is what we need. And then for me, it's like, oh, okay, if I, yeah, tell me where to sign up. Like, let's, yeah. let's go, right? It's, it's that that forward to that forward thinking, that pioneering that is so special, unique, is that they know how to get there, they know how to do it, and they are bringing everyone along with them to achieve those missions in a real way. Absolutely, I 100% agree. I wanna thank you for sharing your day with me, this time of your day with me. I, again, all of you have just spoken. It's like crazy overwhelming, to be quite honest, like to hear you know, I, like I said, I, I walked through the world 30 years now as a Black man with varying levels of fear and uncertainty about how each day is going to go. And when I have moments like the past few days where I'm like, oh, there are people out there really doing some stuff to make sure that people who look like me live, live well, and pass that living well on to their next generations. That is such a reassuring feeling, especially after the last year, you know? Um, and I think about yeah. it, my white husband makes it part of his identity to, to step off center as a white man so that I can be on center because I deserve to. And, and I believe Hamilton Families lives in that same space where they're like, we are a collection of people who are centering the participants. I just love that. It just makes me feel a lot safer that, that you all exist in the world, people who believe in what you believe in and, and are willing to put their 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 work gloves on and do the thing. No, I, I, and I completely agree with you. I think, you know, I look at all the, the conversations you've had today, but also the work that they've done on the course. And it like, it is, um, this year has been both, or the past year, or even part of this year has been both enraging, but also energizing. Mm. So there are people out there who are committed, who are passionate, who are unwavering in their fight to really address this. Absolutely. And, I think that is the most powerful part of this. And that's why it makes, you know, our jobs and lives easier. So it's like, okay, like, you know, we have a village and a tribe who is committed to this. And I, and I, you know, to your husband, I think, you know, thinking about, you know, our allies and accomplices, there's 
um, there is a there is a kind of a protest chant that I remember from last summer where it goes kind of white people to the front. And at first, you know, you kind of laughed about it, but when you really think about it, it's like, how do I put my privilege at the forefront to protect those who need to be protected? Mm. How do I think about using what has allowed me privilege and benefits in my life to protect those, but also to elevate those who do not have those same privileges. Yeah, and it, and it takes both of those to really be able to make the difference that we need to see. And, and, and it's having these kind of conversations and having these larger conversations is how we make those real, those real differences. Absolutely. Thank you again, Christine. Like this was incredible.